everybody, welcome to C3 Films. Today we're doing another episode of It Wasn't That Good. Or it could be an episode of An Open Discussion. We don't know. We're going to figure this out together. Yeah, we don't really know yet. Um, but we're going to go into spoilers. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, uh, the movie that we're doing is Jurassic World Dominion. Um, so go ahead and watch it first and then come back. Um, but until then, I am Cheryl, and this is... Chris. And let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Here's the reason I knew that you and I were going to have two different experiences. Because I know that you watched the regular version of this movie. I watched the extended version of this movie. Oh, and I, so... I also watched the extended version. Oh, you watched the extended version too? Okay, yeah. then. So then that just changes everything because quite literally I had a friend with me watching the movie who had seen the original cut of the film and he hated the movie. And I was so sure that I was going to hate the movie too. But then the movie starts up and the first thing my friend says at the start of the movie is, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, this, this, this wasn't in the, the theatrical cut. What, what is this? And he's like, Oh my God, there's so much context here. What is this? And so throughout the rest of these two hours and 50 minutes experience, I have my friend basically telling me the parts of the movies that have been added for the extended edition that weren't in the theatrical cut. And most of the things that they cut from the theatrical cut are things that enhance the flow of the movie. So my friend who started off hating the movie because he saw the theatrical cut when he watched the extended edition with me he walked away and saying that movie wasn't half bad <laughs> <laughs> because the other half was in it <laughs> <laughs> no exactly and so it's just crazy because um i think that this movie and I wouldn't have known the difference because we didn't see the theatrical cut. We didn't see this movie when it came out in theaters. We waited for it to come out for us to like watch on uh, what is it's not Paramount. I don't forget the streaming service we watched it on. Peacock. Uh, Peacock. Um, and on Peacock, they had the regular and the extended version available. So for me, I just decided I might as well watch the extended version because it's there. Why not? And this reminds me a lot about uh, Justice League and also Batman versus Superman because those are two movies that also kind of suffered because of the editing and they had extended editions that kind of like help with the pacing. And without knowing any better, I would have said that, you know, this movie was fine, but I didn't, but I wouldn't have known that this movie had so many things that were cut out of the overall of the theatrical film that add context um, and more importantly flow for the progression of the movie. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't actually watch the theatrical version, so I have no idea what was not in in the um, theatrical version. Uh, I actually didn't know that I watched the extended edition until like like later, later. Um, but I'm glad I did because uh, I was like, I don't even know what they would have cut out of this to like make make the other version of it. So now I kind of want to watch the. Uh, theatrical version just to see like what what a hot mess they made it yeah so one of the scenes i want to immediately talk about and like i said this is like my friend who was giving me context he was talking about how that whole crustacean uh crust crustacean oh my god crustaceous era um period at the beginning of the movie where they show all the dinosaurs and stuff like they don't show as much of that in the um and my friend's in the chat too so he can remind me if i'm wrong but he was saying that they don't show as much of that in the theatrical cut and one of the most important things that they show in this portion is they show the t-rex getting beaten by the other apex dinosaur like the t-rex dies at the beginning of this movie and the whole point is to establish that this thing is stronger than the t-rex and so when you get to the middle of the film and the t-rex and this thing meet again once again, the T-Rex kind of loses, doesn't die, but kind of gets punked out and has to like leave the food and like walk away. But then by the end of the movie, the T-Rex comes and is able to be victorious. So from just a dinosaur perspective, there's a story arc for the T-Rex that's established through this scene that's at the beginning of the movie that apparently was not in the theatrical cut. Okay, 
Okay, that's interesting. Um, because one of the things that Jurassic Park always does and Jurassic World is they somehow make the T-Rex, like, the good guy. Because the T-Rex mm-hmm. always comes in to save the day. Save the day. <laughs> Whether or not it's intentional is another story, but it always happens. So I kind of liked how they had that thing for T-Rex at the beginning. Um, because it's so, like, overdone for him to just show up. And I would say him. I could have been a female. But, <laughs> um, be, yeah. <laughs> and it. <laughs> a non-binary. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, just coming in again at the end just to save the day. Um, so I'm kind of glad that they gave the T-Rex its own story as well. Yeah, and the other part that was not in the original movie is the part where, um, is his name Owen, um, Chris Pratt's character, I think, Owen, where he, where they're uh, getting dinosaurs in the snow, and then they meet the, they meet the poachers that are pretending to be wildlife um, um, people, and in the movie, apparently in the theatrical cut, that scene is not in there at all. And the first time we kind of see that poacher guy is when he's in the wood, when he's in his car looking at their cabin and saying, "Hey, I found the girl." Um, that's like our first time seeing that character. So there's no context about where he came from, why is he there? But this establishes a relationship. It establishes that he is a poacher. Whoever has gotten one up on Owen, it shows that Owen is also trying to live a different life. Um, and it's also just really cool, like wild, wild west kind of feel where you have these two, these two groups standing off about trying to get these dinosaurs because they're worth different money and things like that. Like all of that, all of that, those elements create a world that I think is interesting because there's so much of this movie that was implied to happen at the end of the second movie which is what i wanted to see what does a world with dinosaurs living in our regular society look like and so this opening is a great way of kind of establishing how the different powers are adapting to that and the conflicts that come from that and then even then little little um little details like the fact that he has native american guides as well that are leading him through so that he can like capture these dinosaurs. This is all this is all flavor that makes sense. So I like I like that scene a lot. It's one of my favorite scenes and it's not in the theatrical cut at all. I wonder how much um, longer the extended version is than the theatrical. I don't know if anybody knows that off the top of their head or if our chat can help us Google that. Um, but I did, I'm not gonna lie, I did feel like the extended version was a little long. I think it was, like, two and a half hours. I think it's two hours, and I think it's almost three hours. Yeah, yeah. it kind of reminds me of, uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I feel like, uh, I think they only cut out, like, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, so I'm not sure how hugely different this is. Um... But, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any other things that you want to talk about that was cut out. Trying to... There's a, there's one other scene that I can remember standing out in my head, and it's when they... It's when Ellie and Alan are with the, the little girl. I forget the little girl's name right now. But they they get on the tram, and then the tram gets to the cave, and then they step out of the cave, and she wants to stay in the, in the tram because she's scared. And I think that's a scene that's a scene that was not in the theatrical cut, but that's another scene that stood out to me because it's char- it's a character moment, right? She's afraid. And so she's also doing the thing that you would think the audience would do, which is like, why am I going to go into the cave where there's clearly dinosaurs that are going to eat me? I'm going to stay in the tram where I'm nice and safe. But then Alan says, you, there's no exits. Right. If you're if you're if you're stuck in this tram, (laughs) something can kill you. And then also then makes it a life lesson of about moving forward and things like that. And it gives him a connection with this with this girl, which is also important for Alan, because Alan uh, historically has always been bad with kids. So this shows some growth for Alan, how he has changed, but also establishes a connection between the two and also shows how this character, uh, the little girl, gets to grow as well to face her fears and to learn to move forward 
and then to the point where eventually at the end of the movie she then even accepts like um the people as uh owen and uh claire as her parents so there's a lot of the stuff that was cut i think were really like character moments and like beats that were cut out to like kind of move the story along from but from what i'm told is that it affected the pacing and that it made it so that things came out of nowhere things didn't really make sense things felt like it was moving too quickly so and as somebody like you know me like i think you're the same way like i really love seeing character interactions and character moments so those stood out to me and that's the like i think that's the last like kind of extra scene that i want to talk about and then we can like you know just jump into talking about the movie itself but i definitely want to say that i feel like based off of what i know that the extended edition the extended version of this movie is a stronger film okay um so playmat says that it's two minutes uh, sorry two hours 26 minutes versus two hours 40 minutes so um it's not a huge huge difference um Mm-hmm. But I guess, you know, if you think about that in terms of scenes, it's quite a bit of scenes because I think one yeah. scene is usually about, like, say, two to five minutes. So, yep. yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, I got to say, like, just overall, I kind of had mixed feelings about it. I think one of them was just the the sheer length of the movie made it hard for me to watch it because I was like, this is a very long six installment of Jurassic Park <laughs> that I'm watching. Um, but at the same time, I kind of like how they brought back the OG characters from the first movie. I mm-hmm. think that really helps a lot with enjoying the movie. But mm-hmm. if I was being honest with myself, I think I was the most interested and intrigued with the movie when it was the original characters and not when (laughs) it was the new characters. (laughs) And when I really, really, really thought about it, they were basically redoing exactly what they did in the first movie, uh, the first Jurassic Park. But but then if I even think about it really, really more... Um, it's basically the same thing in every movie where it's like, okay, how are we going to get these people back on the island that they never want to go back to again (laughs) for the sixth time? Right, exactly. And no, that's a really good point. Um, the structure is very similar and even this movie has so many nostalgia bait moments from the t-rex walking into like the little circle thing to like make the jurassic park symbol to the car that's flipped over and the t and the other like um indominus is it indominus rex i can't remember but the the apex predator that's above the t-rex um walking around the car kind of recreating that whole pen sequence from the from the first movie um yeah there's a lot of things that play off nostalgia but at the same time I like I found myself being drawn in not only because of the original cast but just because I was I was really intrigued in how they were going to bring these two separate groups together because for the longest time the movie kind of has it kind of has I want to say kind of three groups but realistically it's it it's going to come down to two but most people are kind of separated and I think that this movie does a really good job of bringing our two casts together in a way that, you know, it's a little bit coincidental, but at the same time, it feels more earned. Like, because literally, these characters don't meet until, like, the final, like, what, 30 minutes of the movie, maybe? So they spend so much time away, and then when they do meet up, then now we have to deal with all these interactions, these people that haven't talked to each other before. Like, how is Ian Malcolm going to deal with talking with Owen, and how is... Claire and Ellie gonna get along um but it doesn't and maybe it's the extended version but those interactions don't feel rushed or forced by the time we get to them and I think that the movie earns those uh, those beats with those characters by uh, by the end of the film I actually thought it was uh interesting because they they kind of already have some kind of um relation to each other um the two parties and it's through the girl Mm because because they knew her parents and they're both established uh doctors or you know 
um, yeah. you know, the dinosaurs specialists. So she already knew who they were. That makes sense because um, it's, you know, sort of established from that world that these two, actually three people are famous for um, being on the island with the dinosaurs and just knowing, you know, being scientists and knowing a lot about them. So yeah. it kind of makes sense why they would know each other. I don't know so much about, like, you know, the girl trusting them. Um, but considering the situation in which they meet, uh, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know what? Yeah, I need to get out of here, and you guys aren't immediately trying to, like, hurt me, so uh, let's go. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, we don't work here, so sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just take your word for it. Famous scientists. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, it's interesting, too, because, so, like, I'm talking about a lot of things that I do like uh, about this uh, film. Um, we're going to get into, like, the whole, like, overall plot of the movie in a moment here and what I think works and what doesn't work. But I think that I, I – like, you mentioned earlier how you found yourself being most drawn to the things that it, were involving the OG cast. By the way, this movie also gets props for me because it puts its entire OG cast on screen together and doesn't make it so that they never actually meet and then one of them actually gets killed off and then another person dies in real life so they never actually get to ever be on screen together. But you know what? I'm glad that this film actually respects its OG cast. Anyway, so the whole thing is that the OG cast stuff is interesting, but it's also because the stuff that's happening with Owen can sometimes feel a little ridiculous. So like, the parts of the movie that I feel like are the weakest and that don't really work are the parts where Owen talks to dinosaurs as if they're cattle. Where he'll just say things like, go on, get, get. Like he treats them like they're any type of regular animal. And these are dinosaurs. <laughs> but also, in the case of I'm thinking of specifically, is the part where he grabbed that uh, spitting dinosaur by the neck. And even though there were other dinosaurs, rather than them like, go and attack like him just look at him and say yeah go on get get and i'm like i don't i don't know that you can talk to dinosaurs the same way you would talk to like i know i don't know a pack of wolves and even then i think a pack of wolves would still try to eat you so to be there, fair the, he was a yeah. raptor trainer and he did work in the dinosaur zoo so i guess I guess but <laughs> just by just by saying words <laughs> it's like, not, it's to not untrained like, dinosaurs <laughs> it's not like he had that like bone that he could blow through <laughs> right with yeah what really happened to that what happened to that and anything and anything and anything with blue i'm like i'm sorry this is a creature she doesn't know what you're saying <laughs> she's gonna eat you <laughs> But, you know, they want to make these dinosaurs, like, characters, and so that's part of the fun. But there's a certain line that they sometimes cross where it gets a little on the ridiculous side. But outside, that, that's, like, one of my major gripes of, that, of the movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I have, like, a bunch of, like, little things here and there. I think one of the major things that was really driving me crazy was the fact that, like, literally no one ever refuses to run when they're in danger. <laughs> and it reminded me of, um, what's that Zack Snyder movie with the zombies? And they just had, like, that whole conversation when... There Army was, of like, the Dead. A, yeah, there's, like, a ticking <laughs> time bomb, and they're just, like, having a conversation that is not really, you know, the right time or place for it. Um, that is how I felt while watching this because they just, like, never run. And it's like, oh, they're, like, about to get eaten or, like, mauled by a dinosaur and then something else happens that buys them time and, like, help them survive but they are still standing there or, like, I don't know what they're doing and they're just watching the other two dinosaurs fight or whatnot, whatever is happening, they just watch mm. until the fight's over. And then they start running, like, okay, what? why even... <laughs> why Why did you even need time bought? <laughs> so there's stuff like that. And then the other thing that I, I have kind of mixed feelings about is the relationship between um, Ellie and Alan. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, in the first movie, they, like, totally had a thing. 
Yeah. And, like, that was a very, like, intentional thing. But then, I guess because uh, in the in the second and third movie, or I think the third movie... It's the um, third movie. They, they, like, weren't, like, a thing anymore because... I guess it had to do with a like a contract thing with the actors or something with Ellie not really wanting to come back for it or something. Well, like Ellie like was that. she was in the third movie. Uh, yeah, but I don't I don't know why they decided to write that. I I mean I have mm. no idea why they wrote it. Why that they wouldn't way. put them together? Yeah, yeah. why but would, they they would separate them? Yeah, yeah, they intentionally separated them. I just don't know why. Um, mm-hmm. but. Because of that, now that they're being brought back, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, it's over between me and Mark, so I'm totally available now. Yes. Um, but that's not why I'm here. <laughs> you know what? That's a very that's a very interesting point. It's kind of it kind of is interesting because it's like, why would they purposely separate them in the third movie just to bring them back in, together in the sixth movie when they already laid the groundwork for them being together in the first movie? Um, I'm not really sure. I guess and it could just be like writer's prerogative at that point. <laughs> um, uh, maybe they didn't want to have Alan ever have kids of his own for whatever reason. But yeah, it does feel like a, as far as like for an arc for those characters, it kind of it does feel like a little bit of bouncing back and forth. So I can see where you get that little that kind of whiplash from like their relationship. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, I get that they would want to have that kind of relationship again um, between those two characters because it really worked in the first one. And, like, it worked in the second one. I mean, sorry, not the second one. The sixth one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the the issue I have with it is just, like, the convenience of it. Like, oh, okay, so now, like, first you break them up and then now you bring the, like, what is this, a sitcom? And, mm. like, this is the sixth season, and now they're, fin- like, the final chapter, and, like, Ross and now Rachel are getting together. back together. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of felt like that, and it just, uh, I have mixed feelings about it, because I enjoyed it, but at the same time, it just felt very forced. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they have to be together by the end of this movie. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think... But That's just, right, yeah. like, the, the fact that they had to have a whole conversation about where they were in their lives and, like, and that's, like, the whole reason why they're having this conversation is to set them up for getting back together as opposed to them, like, ha- like having a conversation to catch up out about their lives because they're actually colleagues or friends that have, you know, they've known each other. They Never you know, lost touch. Yeah, or, like, they were, like, hazed together on Jurassic Park, and, like, (laughs) you know, they bonded through that, and, like, now they're, like, you know, seeing each other again. It just felt like that conversation could have been something else more interesting than, like, oh, yeah, I'm available now. No, I could feel that. (laughs) Um, So one one other thing that I will say that I want to give um, props to this movie, though, is on how certain scenes are filmed. Because the whole thing about these Jurassic Park movies is that, yeah, they, it's dinosaurs and dinosaurs can be fun, but they're all, they're also dangerous. And there's a lot of scenes that we get in other Jurassic Park movies where it can almost feel like a horror film because like, I think of the first time the T-Rex is breaking out of the pen with the kids trapped in the car in the first movie or with the Raptors in the kitchen in the first movie. So like, there's a lot of scenes that can feel scary. And this movie, I think does a really good job of making dinosaurs scary again like having tense moments um when claire is running from the raptor that the woman puts a laser pointer on her back and if you look at that scene it's very frenetic it's there's no music and it's just her running and it's just the sound of her running her falling her barely escaping this dinosaur and you feel like oh my gosh, she's about to get eaten. And it's it's intense. You feel it. And I like the fact that for the majority of that scene, it's not until I think until they get into the square where the uh, giant dinosaurs are out and like eating the people that they start put, putting music again. But during that entire chase scene for her, it's like the camera work is amazing. And it's also, yeah, like I said, they don't they don't play music because they want you to feel it. And she has another really strong scene when she has to jump from the plane and she lands in the the feeding pen and there's the kind of i guess blind dinosaur that's looking for her 
and she's crawling like by her she's crawling crawling quietly and the camera is just on her there's no cuts she's just crawling towards the camera and you see out of focus the dinosaur behind her stepping slowly towards her as she's crawling slowly to the water and then she gets to the water just in time and goes underneath the water as the dinosaur uh, moves its head into frame and that's all like one cut and it's just and it just lets it play out and i'm like seems like that are like reasons that i kind of like enjoy the movie because even though i know the character is going to be okay it feels tense like oh my gosh you need to hurry up but you don't want to go too fast because you don't want it to hear you but oh my gosh hurry up i thought that she was like hella noisy i was like uh oh, please stop moving i was like <laughs> this is the dinosaur where you don't move <laughs> the other ones are the ones where you do move <laughs> unless it's a t-rex <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know what the right thing is anymore, but um, <laughs> but you're right. I did really like that chase scene with the raptors. I think that was um, probably my favorite part of the movie because um, I actually like right after that whole scene, like that whole chase scene was over. I was like, that was good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. That one. <laughs> that, yeah. Good, good job. <laughs> it's it's been a hot minute since. Uh, Jurassic Park actually pulled um, a good, uh, a real solid dinosaur moment, I guess. Like, like a good, I don't know, just like fully, f- like well thought out, fleshed out, and um, just everything about it was was like perfect. Yeah, I I would watch that watch that scene again and again. Uh, like, yeah, it's just it's just great. Um... The another uh, one of the characters. There's a new character that they had in this movie, the, the pilot. I forget what her name is. I want to say it began with a K. Like, is it Kayla or something like that? Um, I forget. I, I forget. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what her name was. Um, at first, when she was introduced, I did not like her, but as the movie continued, she grew on me because she was saying things that. <laughs> That I felt, um, like when they were standing there on the ice, she's standing there on the ice with Owen, and then the dinosaur dives into the, the ice, and she looks and she's like, nope, and she turns and runs. I was like, okay, that is a good use of humor, and it's realistic. So <laughs> we, we, are, we, are pro- we are proud of this reaction. So by the end of the movie, I actually ended up really liking that character, but when she first showed up, I wasn't, I wasn't all about her. They never said thank you to her for the plane ride, so that kind of really upset me. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's all like, you're welcome, and they still, like, even though she said that, like, they still never thanked her, so I'm like, rude. <laughs> Pri- privilege. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, I did not like that scene on the ice, actually, because I was like... Mm. Why are you guys walking on the ice? You get down on all fours and crawl. And they crawl, they might. They they could have got caught by the dino. But the dino wasn't even there yet. Maybe if they were crawling, the dino wouldn't have seen them. Oh yeah. But anyways, I did not like that. Like the I the even even the way like the dinosaur like went into the water and it was like oh mm. shoot that's like. I really like that idea, but then I was like, why did it come out? I mean, it's Why did it go into the water at all? I can't, I can't remember. Um, oh, I, I don't know why they were so shocked that it was going to jump out of the hole in the mm-hmm. ice. Like, why do you think it went in the water in the first place? It's coming, it's coming for you. It's yeah, coming. <laughs> exactly. And again, it's another moment where, sorry, um, they decided to like hang tight instead of like i don't know keep going <laughs> to save i mean like they did they did run the moment she's she's like i said she said nope and turned around and ran yeah so that's the realistic response but they were just sitting there like on the ice like like and then the dinosaur comes out of the water out of the hole and like the, then they're surprised like that 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 just yeah that didn't that did not get me. I was like, go back to the raptor chasing. That, <laughs> that made more sense. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> There's um the last thing that I kind of want to bring up before we get out of time because I want because we are running up a little bit is just we didn't really get to touch on like the overall plot um which we'll just touch on real quick is that the basically the villain's plan is to create these kind of crickets uh, or or locusts that are spliced with dinosaur DNA or something and they eat all the crops of the world except the except the crops that the person owns that the company owns. Um, but it makes it so that there's going to be a food shortage that's going to just then basically make it so that nobody can eat and blah, blah, whatever. Um, that part of the movie is like, yes, man, it's it's fine. It works. It's it's there just to give the re- the, the, the characters a reason to come together um, ab- around like this whole dinosaur thing, especially the characters who would never step foot in like a Jurassic World setting. Um, and it's it makes sense. But it's not like it's not like an amazing story, but it's also it's it's serviceable serviceable for like moving the moving the characters along. And then I guess yeah. the other plot is the fact that the little girl is being stolen um, because she's a clone, and they can something about studying her can give that company more information to do more of the thing that they're trying to do. Yeah, it's like another one of those um, times where you you have like a pretty simple whatever story, but it's like very lavishly decorated with a mm-hmm. lot of cool things to look at and, and enjoy. So it kind of like, you're right, it's just kind of like meh, whatever. Mm-hmm. I got to see like the OG characters come back and there were some good moments, there were some bad moments, but you know, yeah. overall, I think I had a good time although I had some problems and there's another big problem that I had that I won't get into it um but <laughs> but overall I thought the 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 idea of it um the fact that like you know th- we are like the at least in that world they have to coexist with dinosaurs that seems yeah. pretty cool like that's a cool idea I think and yeah. that's a good way to end it i think it's ending but i think that's a cool way to like mm-hmm. close it up if they if they are indeed closing it up <laughs> i i agree it was like the that was the the implication for this movie was the best part of the of the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom um, cuz that movie was awful um, actually, I lied. There is one last thing. And the very last thing is, I love our characters. I'm glad that they all made it out. But at the end of the day, when you really think about the people that died in this movie, it wasn't anybody that we actually cared about or even anybody that like had a real name outside of the villain. Like, in the original Jurassic Park, there were other characters that were not necessarily evil, and but they, they're like, they were, like Samuel L. Jackson's in that first movie, he dies. Say. Um, the guy who's the, the raptor hunter, he dies. So there's other good characters or other characters that have names or interactions that do die in those movies. But in this movie, none of the main heroes, none of the main people that are even associated with those heroes, none of them kick the bucket. The only people that really die are no-named people and people who um, are villains. I thought Jeff Goldblum was going to die because he was like doing a, the sacrificial... <laughs> slow mo music. Yeah, but then he ended up. I mean, he he did that in the first movie too, which is why I think they um they had him do that again. Um, but then like I also thought he was gonna die in the first one, but then he like they just let him live. Like he got hurt, but they let him live. This time they just let it, they just flat out let him live. And I was like, there's no way all these old people are going, <laughs> and they all live. <laughs> Yeah. Why well, can't it so, be like Star Wars, where you know they off one at the in the first trilogy, uh, first movie oh, of God. the trilogy? Oh God! Yeah, before they actually get to have everybody on the screen together. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not getting into that. This is a this is Jurassic World. And it's great. Um, so at the end of the day, I think that we both overall like the film. Um, there's dumb things in it, but it's overall like it's a good ride. It's enjoyable. We watched the extended version, so that's the version that we're we're, we're judging it on. So like for the theatrical cut, we hear that it's worse. We'll take your word for it. Um, but yeah, like uh, we'll talk more about this on our Twitch channel. If you guys want to join us over there, twitchtv c 3 films It's great to see you guys over there. We talk about this and more outside of like our like the YouTube recording that we do for you here. But 
that's going to be it for us today. But what did you guys think about the movie? Did you see Jurassic World Dominion? What did you think about it? Did you enjoy it? Did you think that it was silly? Did you think it was dumb? Did you not think that it was great? Which version did you see? Did you, did you see the direct theatrical cut when it came out? Have you seen the extended uh, edition? Have we convinced you to maybe watch the extended edition? Whatever you thought about it, comment below. Let us know. And wait down there. If you give us a like, share, and subscribe. Even if you don't, though, I have been Chris, and this has been Cheryl, and we'll see you all next time.